as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. One king, one new huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. You can tell by the stars. Yes, follow the breakfast tip of many a top-action Hollywood movie star. Eat a heaping bowlful of nourishing, delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice topped with milk or cream and fruit. There's a treat that can't be beat. So latch on to delicious Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat, the famous ready-to-serve breakfast cereals Shot from gun. Lige Watson had staked his claim close to the waterfall on Cascades Creek. And unlike most of the miners who had come up there during the rush, he built a comfortable cabin for himself and his son, 10-year-old Ty. Now, with the first snow of winter lying white on the ground... All of the prospectors were leaving the creek. Lige was the only one who had struck pay dirt in any quantity, and it looked as if he and Ty would soon be the only people left on the creek. But the boy didn't mind. He had his dog, a beautiful collie, to keep him company, and he asked for no better friend. Then one fine morning, he went out to the run in back of the cabin and opened the gate. Come on, lady. Come on inside and have your breakfast. There was no answering bark to his invitation no one to lick his hand. The run was empty. Lady! Where are you? Lady! Lige came out of the cabin. Matter, Ty? Where's Lady? Oh, I don't see her. But she couldn't jump over the fence. No. What? There's footprints here, Ty. Men's footprints. She's been stolen. I'm afraid so, son. I heard her bark last night. I thought it was only because she'd heard a wolf. Someone who wanted to use her as a sled dog. What are we going to do? What am I going to do without Lady? Now, don't you worry. We'll find her. How? Oh, somehow, son. But there's no telling where they've taken her. I have to go down to Dawson, Ty. I'll I'll report her to the Northwest Mounted Police. To Sergeant Preston? Yes, to Sergeant Preston. Well, that's all right, then. The Sergeant King will find Lady for me. They've got to, Pa. They will, son. And so Lige and Ty traveled down to Dawson. Sergeant Preston was out when the man and the boy asked for him at headquarters. They said their business was personal. They were shown into his office to wait. King was with the sergeant when he returned. As soon as he saw the boy, he trotted over to him. <laughs> it's King, Ty. Hello, King. Oh, hello, Sergeant. My name is Lige Watson. Well, how do you do? I'm afraid I don't oh, remember. We've never met before, Sergeant. I, I know you're busy and I hate to bother you. But I promised the boy we'd have a talk with you. King likes me to scratch him behind his ears, Pa. <laughs> He's a great dog, Ty. Talk about what, Lion? Oh, about Ty's dog, Lady. She's a collie. She's gold and white, and her ears stand up real straight. Just like King, Sergeant. She's a beauty. I'll bet she is. But she's been stolen. Either that or she's run away. Lady, you'd never run away. No, I don't think she would. Of course, I, uh, I realize you have more important things on your mind, Sergeant. Still, Ty felt that if we asked Please you... Please might... find her for me. I'll do my very best, son. Now, let's have some details. Where do you live and when did Lady disappear? Tell me all about it. We live on Cascades Creek. We went up there when the rush was on last summer and staked a claim. Uh, the one just before the waterfall. Uh, do you know the creek? Mm, yes, but I thought it was deserted now. It is, except for Ty and me. You planning any gold? Some. I found pay dirt in a strange place, Sergeant. In a big cave directly under the falls. Oh, yes, I remember. It's really a series of caves that go way back into the ridge. Oh. 
There's a spring in the farthest one, and what's more, there's gold. It's a good deal better than a grub stake digging. My congratulations. Oh, I'm making out all right. But the other prospectors didn't find much on the creek banks. They all moved out with the first snow. About a month ago? Yes. And they needed sled dogs. Yes, it was then that lady was stolen. Any idea who it might have been? There were hundreds of men up there. I heard her barking the night she was taken. She slept in a run in back of the cabin. She always used to bark when the wolves howled. So I only woke up for a minute and went right back to sleep again. So naturally you didn't see anybody. Uh, I can't see anybody, Sergeant. You... Oh. But I could go every place with Lady. I just took hold of her harness and she'd lead me. She was a wonderful companion. I miss her a lot. I can imagine. Golden white, you said. Uh, she had a white chest and a white blaze on her forehead and uh, four white feet. And a tip of white on her tail, didn't she, Pa? Of course, she wasn't anywhere near as big as King. Uh, about so high, Sergeant. We'll have every member of the force look for her all over the Yukon, Di. Oh, gosh. Thanks, Sergeant. I'd like to give this description to Constable Downey. Lige, will you come with me, please? Oh, why, of course. We'll be back in a moment, Di. Lige, I, I didn't realize about the boy. Is he completely blind? Almost. The way it looks at you, he seems to be seeing you. I mean, his eyes seem to focus. It's as if you were a shadow, Sergeant. A, a dark shadow in a gray mist. That's the way he describes it to me. Well, has he, has he always been? No. Two years ago. Five years ago, he had a bad fall, hit his head. It started then. Can't something be done for him? I've had him to doctors. Why don't you stop at the hospital and let Doc Monday examine him? I... We've practically given up hope. You can't do that with a boy like Ty. Well, sure, if you think it's a good idea, Sergeant. I certainly do. Come on, let's go. And so Ty was taken to the hospital, and Dr. Mundy made his examination. Afterwards, he talked with the sergeant and Lige. I can't give you any real hope, Lige. I was afraid not. That is, I can't do anything for him myself. But there is a possibility that an operation might give him back his sight. Really? There's a surgeon in San Francisco, an old friend of mine named Sam Warren. He's had a number of complete cures. That sounds wonderful. I don't want it to sound too wonderful, Sergeant. You see, the conditions may have been entirely different. Now, the, the doctor's in San Francisco, you say? Uh, could you take him there? In the spring, maybe we could. I'd have enough gold by then. Well, I'll write Sam today. I'll tell him exactly what I found. And then all we can do is wait for his recommendation. We can try to find Lady... That's what we'll be doing instead of waiting. I sure hope you do. It would mean so much to him. I know what losing his dog means to a boy, Lige. I meant it when I said that the whole force would be looking for her. Thanks much, Sergeant. And thank you, Doc. Well, Ty and I will be getting back to the creek now. There's always the chance that Lady will be waiting for us when we get there. But the collie had not returned to Cascades Creek. And during the months that followed, the Northwest Mounted were unable to find any trace of her. In time, nearly every man who had been at the creek when she disappeared had been questioned. Then, late in February, Sergeant Preston got ready for a patrol of the Indian villages north of Beaver City. He was just about to start out from headquarters when Doc ran up to him waving a letter. Sergeant! Sergeant! Good news! Really? Heard this letter from Sam about the Watson boy. He's more than optimistic. He's sure that the blindness must be caused by pressure in the optic nerve that an operation can release it. You'll be able to see her again? A very good chance. Will you be anywhere near Cascades Creek? I was going to stop there on my way home. Well, here, take the letter. Let Lige read what Sam says for himself. All right. I'll be there in about a month. Perhaps it'll make the boy forgive us for not being able to find his dog. No word. None. But this is great. So long, Doc. Have a good trip, Sergeant. Thanks. All right, King. And King, the husky! The reason that the Northwest Mounted had been unable to find any trace of Lady was that she spent most of that winter chained outside of an old trapper's cabin deep in the forest near Beaver City. After their failure to find gold at Cascades Creek, Buzz Farley, Mac McFall, and Silk Shelby had moved into the cabin and had reverted to the profession they had followed in San Francisco, robbery. Beaver City was the scene of their operations, but since most of their dogs were stolen, they had never driven either of their teams into the town. Now, however, during the second week in March, they were planning to make an exception to their rule. We'll have to drive right up to the express office. 
We'll need both our sleds to carry the gold. There's that much, huh? Yeah, and it'll help us make a fast getaway. Why don't we come back here? We settled at once. Yeah, but Cascades is a full day's travel. Who'll see us on that trail? And when we get there, we'll be able to hide out for as long as we want. You sure about the gold being in the safe? I saw them unload it this afternoon. They won't be taking it to Dawson until tomorrow. But tonight's the night. You can handle the safe, Mac, huh? A cinch. How about getting into the office? We'll force a window. It's simple. The whole job won't take more than 15 minutes. Well, it's after midnight now. Uh, let's get started. Right. Right. A moment later, the men were harnessing their teams. As soon as Lady was freed of her chain, she tried to get away from Buzz. Cut that out, you mutt! This collie's more trouble than she's worth. Give her a good bell over the head. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give you a hand with it. Just hold it. All right. Steady, you. Steady. There. That's it. How about it, Silk? Ready. Find my board, Buzz. I'll drive. That suits me. I must. Push her. The streets of Beaver City were deserted when they reached the town. They drove straight to the express office and stopped their teams in the shadows at the side of the building. Mac went to work on one of the windows with a jimmy. You need any help? No, no. Good. Yeah. You first. Got the lantern? Yeah. Keep a sharp lookout, Silk. Pass the word if you see anybody at all. Okay. All right. <coughs> Like the lantern. Right. The back of the counter. Come on. I keep that lantern shaded. Yeah, I am. Well, this safe's an old timer. I'll have it open in five minutes. How's she coming? I'll get it shut up. Hey, you there. What hey, listen. What are you doing? Who are you anyway? We better get out of here. I'll wait. Answer me. Get out of those shadows and put up your hands. I got a gun here. Well, so far, mister. You're the fool. Can't you get the safe open? No, no, no time. Come on. But the gold. The shot will rouse the whole town. Hurry. Come on, Mike. We got to get out of here. Uh, you fool, Silk. I had to shoot. He was coming after me with a gun. We didn't have time to get the safe open. Look, they're coming out of the cafe. Get going, Silk. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. alarm clock. Oh. Get up. Get up. I can't keep on ringing all day. Uh, uh, who said that? Where? Am I dreaming? No, I can't be. I just turned off the alarm. Yes, that's better. But you, an alarm clock talking. Yes, don't be alarmed. Well, that's impossible. Ridiculous. But why? Who wants to just tick and ring all his life? Well, it might be monotonous at that. Sure, I work and work to wake you up. Well, I hate it, too. But you get to eat the breakfast cereal shot from guns. Ah, yes. That is the best part of getting up. A bowl of delicious, swell-tasting Quaker popped wheat or Quaker popped rice topped with fruit and milk or cream. Oh, if I could only taste them. They look so crisp and tender. Gee, I'll bet they melt in your mouth. You really would love Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. You know, they're the choice king-size, flavor-rich kernels exploded up to eight times normal size. They're actually shot from guns. Gee, shot from guns. They're, why, they're eight times bigger and better tasting. Man, oh man, how I could go for a heaping bowlful. That's how millions feel about Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Oh, I don't mean talking alarm clocks. I mean you fellas and girls. For your breakfast treat tomorrow morning, be sure to enjoy Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice. Shot from gun. Now to continue. Mac, Buzz, and Silk drove out of town and on into the forest. They headed straight for the north, and by daybreak had reached the Cascades Trail on the far side of the forest. They traveled fast all that day, hardly stopping to eat. Lady worked with a will, 
For the first time in months, she was on her way home. They reached the creek shortly after nightfall and drove on past one tumble-down cabin after another, the only evidence of the previous summer's rush. At last, they stopped before one that was in better condition than the others. Now, Lady couldn't control her eagerness. Home was so close, Buzz could hardly restrain her. Cut it out. It looks as if she wants to keep on going up the creek. I'll teach her. I'll beat her to a pulp. No, no, wait. Flip this leash on her. What's the idea? Uh, here. Yeah, this was where we picked her up, remember? Probably thinks her owner's still around. Yeah, she might be right. Yeah, give me the leash. Okay, here. Hey, where are you going? Wherever she wants to go. Wait here. Mac allowed himself to be pulled forward as Lady strained against the leash. Half a mile farther on, they rounded a bend in the creek, and Mac could see the lighted windows of Lige Watson's cabin. Yeah, this is far enough. Beyond the cabin, the frozen waterfall gleamed in the moonlight. Near its base, there seemed to be an opening in the ice. Yeah. Looks like the entrance to a cave. It could be. Now back, you must bring going back. <laughs> Ty had already gone to bed, and Lige was weighing out some gold dust when he heard the team stopping outside his cabin. Well, travelers. Hello. Howdy. Having trouble with your team? That one dog seems to... Hey, that's Lady. So you recognize your colleague? I sure do. All right, inside, mister, you're covered. Crooks, please. Shut up, will you? Hey, not a bad setup, Mac. Plenty of supplies. Hey, look. Gold dust. Maybe he's got a lot of it. What do you want? We'll decide that later. Hey, who's that in the next room? My son. He's only a boy. Pa? No, I'm not your pa. Now shut up and go to sleep or I'll put a bullet through you. And you, mister, take a seat. I want you to answer a few questions. Well, uh, now, go on. Sit down. Oh, yeah. Mac, Buzz, and Silk took turns shooting questions at Lige for the next 15 minutes. Then... Well, mister, I'm going to give it to you straight. We had a little trouble in Beaver City, and we're looking for a nice, quiet place to settle down for a while. Settle down and take it easy. I suppose you've robbed the bank. No, it was the express office, and we had to leave in a hurry. Yeah, all your fault, Silk. Why'd you have to shoot? If I hadn't, we'd be in jail right now. All the charge wouldn't be murder. Cut it out! As I was saying, mister, we're in a little jam... So we're going to stay here with you until it blows over. Murder. Don't make trouble. You might be next. Well, I'll give you all the gold dust I have if you'll only clear out and leave us alone. Later on, we'll stay a while. Now, first you can cook us some grub. Afterwards, we'll take a look at your claim inside the cave. Now, go on, get to work some grub. Lige was forced to cook supper for the three men. Afterwards, Buzz stayed in the cabin while Mac and Silk went with Lige to inspect his diggings in the cave. They had been gone for half an hour when Buzz heard a dog team. Hey, those aren't our dogs. Better put out the lamp. He hurried to the window. Hey, that's bad. He watched the driver stop his team just outside the cabin. Worse and more of it. That's a money. Couldn't be looking for us. I'll make the boy get rid of him. Hey, kid, come on, wake up. I'm awake. Now, listen. There's a money outside. You'll have to let him in. But I want you to get rid of him fast. Well, how? That's up to you. He'll have seen your dog. They're out in the back in the run. Now, go on, answer the door. Oh, now, wait a minute. Here, light this lamp. I'll take it with you. I haven't got any matches. Now, I'll do it. Hey, now, take it. Yes, sir. Now, listen. I'm going to stay here in this room, but I'll have the door open a little. I'll have you covered every second. Try to tip that money off about us, and I'll let you have it. I don't know how to get rid of it. You better think of something, kid. Now, hurry up. Just as soon as I get into my mud. Go on. All right. Hello, Ty. Sergeant Preston and King. Come in. As soon as King entered the cabin, he trotted over to the bedroom door, sniffed curiously, and returned to his master's side. Sit down, won't you? Well, isn't your father around? No, he isn't. He he won't be back. Oh, where's he going? Well, uh, you know the Indian village on the other side of the ridge? Yes. Well, there's some sickness. The chief came over and asked Pa to go back with him. But but he won't be able to help much. Oh. Uh, say, before you unharness your team, couldn't you drive over there? 
I know the chief would appreciate it a lot. Well, yes, Ty. There's no reason why I shouldn't lend a hand. I have some medicine on my sled. Oh, they'll appreciate it. Before I go, I have some good news for you. Look, uh, I mean, here's a letter, Ty. For me? Oh, that's swell. Do you mind if I read it right now? What? Why, no, Ty. <laughs> so Solomon, I get a letter. Hey, it's from Jeff in Beaver City. You must have passed through there. What do you know? Lots of excitement, huh, Sergeant? Were you there when they tried to hold up the express office? No, I wasn't. Jeff says there was one man killed and, and the crooks got away. You suppose they came this way, Sergeant? I'm not working on that case, Ty. Oh, I thought you might be. No, but I'd better be on my way. Yeah. You, uh, you'll be all right here for a little while. Oh, sure. Perhaps your father and I will be back before morning. Sure. Bye, Ty. Goodbye, Sergeant. Come on, King. <laughs> no, you can't really be... Ah, uh, you little double-crosser. I got rid of him, didn't I? He's gone on to the Indian village. You tried to tip him off reading him that letter. Let me see that. No! Nobody could have wrote you about us. There hasn't been time to... Huh? Dear doctor. Hey, what is this? Up with your hands. Sergeant! Come on, Up with him. I'll take that gun. Right. You didn't go. No, Ty, I only drove around and back. Who is this man? He's one of the crooks. There are three of them. I haven't been anywhere near Beaver City. What happened there? They tried to hold up the express office. They shot a man. Where's your father? He's in the cave with the other two. I don't get it. How'd you figure out he was pulling a fake when he read from this letter? Obviously, because I knew what was in the letter. And because he knows I can't read it. Huh? I'm blind. You what? You may not be for long, Ty. There's good news in the letter. I'll read it to you as soon as I get the other two. In the cave? With Pa, yeah. I'll tie this one up first. Buzz was bound hand and foot. And then the sergeant and King started for the cave. But they had barely stepped outside the cabin when they heard voices. Easy, boy. There was the glimmer of a lantern at the opening of the cave. Lige was carrying it. Come on, King. We waited around the corner of the cabin. I didn't get as far as the door. We can't take a chance on shooting it out. Lige might be hurt. The sergeant and King waited in the shadows. Lige was walking in front of Mac and Silk. Hey, you're a lucky man, Lige. The only man to find real pay dirt on Death Cage Creek. He must have panned out a fortune. Yeah, that's what I say. A real lucky guy. <laughs> Lige reached the door and opened it. The sergeant went into action. He brought the butt of his revolver down on Silk's head. Oh. Silk dropped to the ground, but the effort threw the sergeant off balance. And Mac, whirling to meet his attack, drove a right to his jaw. The sergeant fell. Mac drew his gun. King leaped at him. But Mac was a big man and stood up under the force of the charge. He slashed King's head with the barrel of his gun and hit him hard. Now the sergeant was up. Still unwilling to shoot because of Lige standing just behind Mac, he holstered his gun and grabbed Mac's gun hand as he tried to level on the sergeant once more. It was a test of strength, a moment charged with suspense, and then the gun shot out of Mac's hand. But at the same moment, he wrenched free of the sergeant and drove another crashing right to the sergeant's jaw. The sergeant staggered back. Mac started for his gun, but King, on his feet again, barred his path. The sergeant waded in, both fists flying, and Mac was forced to give ground before his attack. He fought back savagely. King barked encouragement to his master. Mac was a huge man and possessed a bull-like strength. Still, he was unable to match the sergeant's skill with his fists. And so he fought his way through a flurry of rights and lefts and wrestled the sergeant to the ground. Over and over they rolled down the creek bank. King would have liked to follow them, but Silk was showing signs of returning consciousness, and the great dog felt that he must stand guard over him until Lige picked up the sergeant's revolver. Don't worry about this one, King. I've got him covered now. King raced down the bank after his master. The sergeant had regained his feet at the bottom of the bank. So had Mac. Mac charged again. The sergeant let him come in. He knew he was weakening. He knew also he must concentrate every ounce of effort in one punch. He swung hard. His right cracked into Mac's jaw. The big man wavered for a second and then crashed to the ground. The fight was over. An hour later, Mac, Silk, and Buzz were sitting on the floor of the cabin, their hands tied behind their backs. King was lying beside the sergeant's chair. Lady stood with her head on Ty's knee, gazing up into his face, while Lige read the letter the sergeant had brought from Doc Mundy. Yes, by all means, send me the boy. I trust your diagnosis, and from it, I'm almost certain the operation will be a success. 
What do you think of that, Ty? It'll be awfully expensive, won't it? Don't you worry about that. The sergeant saved our gold for us, so we have plenty. Oh, it'll be wonderful. You won't have to be my eyes anymore, lady. Oh, but gosh, it's wonderful to have you back. That's the best of everything. <laughs> <laughs> Will you have any trouble getting these crooks to Beaver City, Sergeant? Oh, I don't think so. We've packed more dangerous crates. Oh, Silk did the shooting. You can't charge Mac and me with murder. I warn you, everything you say will be used against you, but you've already talked enough to convict yourself. Sure, we broke into the express office. Robbery arms. But it was Silk that shot the man. Shut up. Too bad you didn't investigate the law a little before you decided to break it. If the man who was shot is dead, you'll be tried for murder. No. All three of you. My guess, the jury won't be out very long. When they say guilty, this case will be closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Listen, fellas and girls, the minute you get one of the eight exciting Yukon Trail packages of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice, you'll want all the rest for sure. Right on these eight different packages, you get a total of 59 Yukon Trail cutout models. Just go to your grocers. There's no waiting, no box tops. No extra cost. With these larger, easier-to-build models, you have the Yukon Trail right before your eyes. The very places where Sergeant Preston and King have their exciting adventures. You get the general store in Whitehorse and the trading post in Dawson City. You get the Klondike Mountain and Forest, the Indian Waterfall. You get Sergeant Preston's cabin, his dog sled, and team of huskies. You get the Dawson City Landing Pier and the Yukon Queen Riverboat with a paddle that actually turns. So build your complete Yukon Trail from Whitehorse to Dawson right away. Every one of these 59 thrilling Yukon Trail models is yours at no extra cost. But remember, they come only on the big red and blue packages of delicious, nourishing Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. The original, crisp, fresh, shot-from-gun cereal that is never sold in bags or bulk. Get them at your grocer's now. Step on it. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of hidden evidence. When King and I arrived in Selkirk, we got there just in time to help investigate a murder. Two brothers, good friends of mine, were involved. I was determined to get the murderer, regardless of where the chips might fall. But I didn't expect that King and I would find ourselves facing the killer's gun. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.